I would argue that our food supply is really dreadfully, dreadfully contaminated with things that are of real concern. We're talking about food dyes. The Center for Science and the Public Interest has been pushing for a ban on eight artificial dyes, claiming that they can severely affect children's behavior. Research shows that for kids who have ADHD, um, exposure to certain food additives, including some preservatives and food dyes, can exaggerate their symptoms. And when they're taken away, their symptoms improve. In a video posted on YouTube that's now rocketed across the web, food bloggers Lisa Leak and Vani Hari say they are fearful of two food colorings, yellow numbers five and six. I'll just mention, yellow number five was shown in a recent study. This was covered by Science Magazine. The yellow number five, I forget the technical name, when spread on the bellies of these mice, made their bellies transparent to light. You can literally see their organs and people can look this up. This That's is all, this crazy. is in main, mainstream media and yeah, it's wild. So new research just published is raising a red flag about a pesticide that's linked to reproductive issues in animals and this new study says 80% of Americans tested have that pesticide in their system. Pesticides are a major cause of endocrine disruptors so people in rural communities are much more prone to cancer causing and endocrine disrupting pesticides. This is a, a serious serious issue. The FDA is a very conservative organization. Now you might say, wait, hold on, they'll put yellow number five in our food. They won't do that in Europe or Canada, but they won't approve FDMA. Yep, there is a higher bar for drugs to become FDA prescription approved drugs in this country than there is for stuff to make it into the food supply. A new clinical trial shows the active ingredient in the recreational drug ecstasy has promising results when it comes to treating post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. So we got a drug MDMA that, assuming it's pure and assuming it's applied in a clinical study, has been shown multiple times now to lead to not just improvement, but remission of post-traumatic stress disorder. 88% of the people had clinically significant decrease in their PTSD symptoms. 67% of them lost their PTSD diagnosis. It allows people to feel their feelings, to feel safe feeling their feelings, even about very traumatic events and working with a therapist to work through that with them. It just enrages me that this stuff is working so much and uh, for so many people and we have to leave the country to get it. And meanwhile, there's people killing themselves. I have more friends that have died from suicide than I have in combat. Suicide rates among military personnel and veterans are climbing to new highs. In post 9-11 conflicts, the study found that four times as many U.S. service members and veterans have died by suicide than have been killed in combat. You look at all the toys in a toy store and the, the like boxes of all these toys nowadays are like this warrior walking out from all this destruction behind him. like. He won and he's alone. There isn't a picture of like being in community or being with family or it's that we've created this model of like this, of this like lone wolf and triumph. We have a serious, serious crisis of identity. These young guys are so confused about whether or not they have any worth in the world. And we need something outside ourselves that we can look to when we're troubled to help us help steer us right. And that can be brotherhood and family and friends, but we need more men supporting other men on how to be a good man. I'm putting the call out now, like, I think we gotta like, crew up and take care of each other because time's going by. I think that you single-handedly may have made the health and wellness subject the most popular subject on podcast platforms. I mean, definitely a major part. In, and I also appreciate how seriously you take it. Podcasting is real. And traditional media, they're in competition with us. We're not in competition with them. Nothing sounds more hippie woo and conspiracy theorists if you, go, if you say fluoride might not be healthy. But then I started looking and there are data published on PubMed, Library of Congress, right? That say that it might, might impact thyroid hormone and neurodevelopmental issues, might. Okay, so I covered that a little bit. My Wikipedia slammed. I'm a fluoride denier. <laughs> Suddenly I'm a I, I'm not a fluoride denier. Suddenly they accuse me of being a fluoride denier and I started catching a lot more heat from trad media. Fast forward six months or so, there's two lawsuits in this country. One against a major city on the West Coast to try and remove fluoride. One against a major city on the East Coast to try and increase the amount of fluoride because they claim that there wasn't enough fluoride in there to protect the teeth of these kids. But now I open up the internet the other day and all of a sudden NIH, CDC are saying, hey, we might be concerned about new data and some old data about fluoride and neurodevelopmental issues. 
suddenly it's covered by trad media. So now it's okay to talk about because they're talking about it. But we were right before and we're right now. Never forget, no matter how far you drive, you're always the same distance from the ditch. And I know this because I've had colleagues just this last year, neuroscientists, that were acting a little weird, no one knew why, oxy addict, one just died, one of the most famous developmental neurobiologists I know. And you realize like no one's immune from this stuff. Every time before I, I go into prayer, I think about this a lot, I think someday I'm gonna draw in a breath and I'm gonna know that's my last one. Man, that's scary. Are you comfortable with that? Mm -hmm.